For a second lesson in Module 7, Lesson 1, we're looking at writing a real-world situation from an equation. And our goal for this lesson is to write a scenario that represents a given equation. So what's actually going to happen is for each problem for this particular part of the lesson, you're going to be given the equation, and instead of solving the equation, you're going to have to come up with some sort of scenario or situation that could be modeled by the equation that you're given. And this is really your chance to be creative and a bit unique in the answers that you give, just because the possibilities really are, are endless. Um, I will say that it's, it's nice you doing these problems in uh, my HRW online, just because they, they pretty much have the scenarios and the situations set up for you. You're only um, inputting the values that, uh, that they give you in the problem. But if you're doing this in pencil and paper out of the textbook or anything like that, you could literally come up with any type of scenario that you that you wanted. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples to see what we could what we can make up for our scenarios. So for our first example, we have 150 plus 25x is equal to 55x. Now, if this was a problem where we were told to solve the equation, we would start off, we would subtract 25x from both sides get 150 is equal to 30x, divide both sides by 30, and we would get x is equal to our answer. With this type of problem, however, that's not our goal. Our goal is not to solve for x. Our goal is rather to come up with a scenario or a situation that could be represented by this equation. So essentially we're coming up with, with scenarios or situations that this equation could represent. And it's kind of an opportunity for you guys to, again, be creative, or unique in your answers. Um, my HRW does uh, a nice job of setting up the scenarios for us where we don't have to do much as far as uh, the creativity piece, but we just are mostly focused on entering our, our information. Um, but if you want to, if you want to show your creativity or your, your uniqueness, you are free to, and welcome to open up your book and turn to this, uh, turn to this page in your book to 7.1 and go through some of these problems and show some of your um, imagination with how an equation can represent or how an equation can be represented by a scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk through a few scenarios that could be represented by this equation and in my opinion the easiest route to take with these is to always go back to money whether it's you making money whether it's you spending money different things like that. Money is one of the easiest ways to represent, to have numbers represent a scenario um, that I can think of. So I'm just going to write down a few different scenarios and then kind of walk through how the scenario can be represented by the equation that I gave you. So for our first scenario, what I was thinking was just related back to all the snow that we had about a, uh, a month ago or so, maybe not even that long ago, and how industrious students could have made a killing shoveling driveways for for neighbors or people in the neighborhood that kind of thing so in this scenario that I'm thinking uh, you and a friend are um, opening up rival snow shoveling businesses and one of you charges $150 for a subscription fee and then earns an additional $25 every time you go over to shovel the driveway while the other one of you just charges a flat fee of $55 each time you shovel the driveway. So again, scenario we're shoveling driveways. Question could be asked after how many driveways or how many snowfalls would it take for you guys to equal the same amount of money. Another scenario I thought of that could represent this equation might be the fee that a handyman might charge to come to a person's house to do some work. And so there's two different handymen. Um, one handyman charges $150 just to come to your house and then charges you $25 for every hour that he's there, while the other handyman doesn't charge an uh, initial fee at all, but he will charge you $55 for every hour that he's there. So how many hours would it take for them to work in order to both earn the same amount of money? So second scenario again would be a handyman hour a handyman's hourly fee and who which handyman do you want to go with based on a, based on how many hours you think 
a project might take. Now for our third scenario, and this one is might maybe uh, might be my more creative scenario of the three, uh, but you have two pirates that are hanging out. Pirate one steals gold from pirate two, and he starts hobbling away. You see pirate one has a peg leg, and so he doesn't move along all that quickly. Well, pirate one gets 150 yards away from pirate two before pirate two realizes it and has to start running after pirate one. So pirate one has a 150 yard head, uh, head start, but he, because of his peg leg, is only able to travel 25 yards per minute, while pirate two is able to travel at 55 yards per minute. How long, how many minutes will it take until pirate two can catch up with pirate one? So these are the three scenarios that I came up with that could be represented by this equation, again, in the third scenario. Pirate one has a 150 yard head lead, head start, but can only travel at 25 yards per minute, while Pirate 2 can run at a rate of 55 yards per minute. So again, it's your, it's your option, it's your opportunity to be creative in the way that uh, you set up these scenarios. Alright, second example, we have the equation 40x is equal to 100 plus 15x. I'm only going to come up with one scenario for you guys for this one. And I want you guys to come up with another scenario of your own and write it on your notes. When I'm checking in your notes for 7.1b, I'm going to look for the second scenario for example 2. So the example or the scenario that I came up with for this equation would be some, could be something along the lines of, um, let's say you're getting uh, tennis lessons or something like that, some sort of lessons. And the, the tennis club uh, charges members $40 per lesson but it only charges non-members, I'm sorry, charges non-members $40 per lesson, but it charges members only $15 per, per lesson. However, in order to become a member, you have to pay a one-time fee of $100. So for lessons, $40 if you're a non-member of the club, or $15 if you are a member of the club with the $100 one-time fee. So I just real briefly wrote that the scenario could be tennis lessons, but I verbally explained to you guys what the how the equation could fit the scenario. So I want you guys to be detailed. I want you to write at least three sentences about your scenario, explaining how your scenario can be represented by the equation. Okay, so I'm going to be looking for at least three sentences explaining how your scenario could be represented by the equation. Now before I close out the video, I want to go back to a problem from 7.1a real quick. Back in 7.1a, I gave you a, a word problem. It was the last problem from the, from the notes where I, uh, where I was dealing with a uh, car rental company, car rental place, and Andy's car rental place charged $20 uh, for the rental plus $30 per day, while Buddy's charged $36 plus $28 per day. So what we did was we set these two expressions equal to each other, and we were able to find out eventually that x is equal to 8. And in my video from 7.1a, I said, all right, so we have to determine who's going to be the better deal. We know that they're equal if we rent the cars for 8 days. But who's a better deal if we rent for 7 days, and who's a better deal if we rent for 9 days or more? So a week or less, one of the companies is going to be a better deal, nine days or more, the other company will be a better deal. So in order to figure this out, in order to figure out who is going to have a better deal based on the number of days, we have to go ahead and basically use guess and check. So we know that the, number, that the amount of money that we're going to be charged at Andy's and at Buddy's will be equal if we rent the car for eight days. But what if we rent for seven days? What we have to do is we have to go back to the expressions, and we have 20 plus 30, but instead of x, we're going to use 7. And then for buddies, we're going to say 36 plus 28, again, times 7. And whichever number is smaller, that's going to be the cheaper place to rent our vehicles from. So we're going to do a little, do a little bit of solving here. And so for seven, a 7 day rental at Andy's, we have 20 plus 30 times 7 is going to be 210. So for a total of 7 days, it's going to be $230.
but if we run from buddies, it'll be 36 plus 36 plus 196, and when we add those together, we get 232. So if we're going to rent the vehicle for seven days or less, Andy is going to have the better deal for us. However, if Andy is the better deal for seven days or less, that tells us that if we're going to rent for nine days or more, Buddy is actually going to have the better deal for us. So again, to recap, seven days or less, Andy's company is the better deal. Eight days, it doesn't matter who you go with. They're both going to charge you the same amount of money. If you go with Buddy's, you should be renting for nine days or more, and that way you'll get the better deal. And that brings our lesson to a close. Uh, not a whole lot of writing that you guys had to do for this one, um, except for the scenario two, for example two, where you have to write a scenario that represents a given equation. So hopefully we have a better understanding of how to do this. I think you'll find it much easier when you're actually going through and doing the problems on my MyHRW. Again, because everything's all set up for you, all you have to do is enter in the key information into the problem. But any questions or concerns that you have, go ahead and write those down, and we'll talk about those in class tomorrow.